Are you an existing homeowner looking to purchase a new home, but you aren't sure if you should sell first and then buy or buy first and then sell? This is one of the most commonly asked questions that we get as realtors, but honestly, the answer to this question isn't as easy and cut and dry as people think. In this video, I'm gonna provide my answer to this question, give my opinion, and provide an easy to follow step-by-step -step process that is guaranteed for success. If you see value in these videos and the content that I put out, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps with the algorithm, my business, and is super appreciated. Alternatively, if you're looking to buy or sell anywhere in Winnipeg, Manitoba, or surrounding areas, or if you have any general real estate questions, please reach out to me anytime. My contact info is in the description below, and it would be an absolute honor and pleasure to earn your trust and business in the near future. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. At the Boschman team, we've had the pleasure of helping hundreds of people buy and sell their homes, and most of them have experienced the exact same dilemma and had this exact same question. Should we buy first and then sell, or should we go ahead and sell first and then buy? Well, here's my answer. It depends. And no, that's not a cop-out answer. It honestly just depends on a multitude of factors because there's a ton of variables. Every single real estate transaction and situation is totally different. No two real estate deals are ever alike. So when I'm presented with this question, I like to walk my clients through a step-by-step -step process to ensure that everything is transparent and people have all of the options available to them in front of them in order to make the best decision for them and their family. So step one in this process is consulting with your realtor. You're probably thinking, of course the realtor would say to contact them first, but no. The reality is that it's highly likely that a good real estate professional has gone through this scenario many times before. We can take a look at what you and your family are trying to achieve, understand your goals, give advice and make honest recommendations on where to start with this process. A good realtor that understands the market will be able to give you an honest opinion of value of your home and let you know what you can fetch for a sale price when it comes time to sell. You need to know where you are now before you know, before you know where you're going, as it's ultimately going to help you decide if the next home purchase is actually feasible for you. A good realtor is also able to give you advice as to what you should do to your existing home prior to listing it for sale to help achieve the maximum sale price, whether that's making slight upgrades or repairs, improving the curb appeal of the property, decluttering, staging, destaging, etc. Our job is to ultimately come up with a game plan for success. Maximize the sale ability, maximize the sale price with the least amount of headaches, and ultimately get you and your family into that next chapter and into that next home. The second step in this process is to contact your mortgage specialist. And in reality, this step often coincides with step one. It should really happen simultaneously to keep your realtor in the know with what your options are. Personally, I like to have conversations with my client's mortgage specialist during this time so that I can fully understand what needs to be done to appease the lender or the bank, whether that's a credit union, bank as different lenders have different procedures and rules that we need to follow we need to know exactly what you qualify for on the new purchase we need to know if you have an existing mortgage we need to figure out if it can be ported or transferred to the new property or if it's even worth doing that or maybe it's best to just close out the existing mortgage and qualify for a new mortgage what does that all look like? It's also highly likely that the lender will want to have a rough idea of what your home is likely to sell for once it's listed for sale. So whether that's an opinion of value from a realtor or an appraisal from your bank, they're going to need that on your existing home before they move forward. These are all super important factors that need to be looked at before pulling the trigger on the new home purchase. Once we've talked about your plans, assessed your property's value, chatted with your mortgage specialist, the next step is to figure out how exactly we're going to execute the plan to purchase the new home and get you moved. This is where step three in this process comes into play, and that's understanding the current market. Depending on what's happening in the market at the time, whether it's a buyer's or balanced market or a red hot seller's market, this will ultimately determine if we are selling your home first and then writing an offer on the next home, or if we are writing an offer on the new home first and then selling. And what does that look like, whether it's conditional or unconditional on the sale of your existing home? For example, if the market is a seller's market, this means there's a tremendous amount of buyer demand for houses and sellers are able to sell their homes for quickly and for top dollar. This is where you're going to see a lot of bidding wars taking place. And in this scenario, it's highly unlikely you'll be able to get your offer accepted with a condition of selling your existing home. 
the sellers likely have many other buyers that are willing to purchase that same home with little to no conditions. The seller is gonna take the best offer for them at the end of the day. If that's the case, then having a subject to sale condition is likely to be the kiss of death for your offer. This is likely where I would recommend that we sell your home first so that we avoid having to write an offer with the condition of sale and we know exactly what you're working with in terms of price. This should give you the confidence that you deserve when it comes to writing an offer on the new home because our offer will then be super strong. Because it's a seller's market, we can also dictate the terms to the purchasers of your existing home, such as setting a flexible possession date or a later date if necessary, to give us the time that we need to shop for the next home and not feel pressured. I've also been in many situations where, in a seller's market, the perfect house comes up for sale before the client's existing house hits the market, we book a showing of the property, the clients fall in love with it, they want to write an offer, all before we have their existing home sold. And in this case, what I do is I contact the client's mortgage specialist. They advise me that they could provide a conditional approval for financing. This approval is conditional upon us selling their existing home prior to the date of possession on the new home and having a firm sale. We go ahead and list the existing property for sale immediately and sell it long before the date of possession on the new home. Now I'm gonna put a disclaimer in here. There are risks associated with doing this and we need to make sure that we are 10,000% confident that the house will sell before the date of possession on the new home as to not blow everything up with a purchase. Again, super risky and that's why the market plays such an important factor in this scenario. On the other hand, if we are in a buyer's market, then this means there's more supply than there is demand. There's more options and houses to choose from and ultimately more power in the hands of the buyer. This is where I would suggest that we go house shopping before your existing home is sold. We can weigh out the pros and cons of each property and write an offer that is conditional upon the sale of your existing home. Then we go ahead, put your house up for sale, and the only way that we're removing conditions on the purchase of the new home is once your existing home sells. And because it's a buyer's market, it's likely that buyers will be doing the same thing on the purchase of your home. And this is where we can get into a bit of a domino effect of subject to sale conditions. Because once one house sells or one domino falls, then they all fall into place simultaneously. This situation is actually quite common in Manitoba during a buyer's market. And even though it sounds annoying, at least everyone is protected with that condition of sale. If you can't sell your home, you can walk away from the deal and keep your deposit. No harm, no foul. So there we have it. My three-step process for determining whether or not to sell first and then buy or buy first and then sell. Not as easy of a question to answer now, is it? It's very important that you take a look at all of these components and have a good, solid real estate professional who understands the market and can help you navigate through this challenging process. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have questions about the market or if you need advice when it comes to your real estate needs, I would love to help. My name is James Boschman. I'm a realtor with the Boschman team and eXp Realty, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care.